Hello and welcome to Spy Hard's podcast. We're back with another Spy Master interview celebrating 60 years of James Bond and 2006's film Casino Royale. I'm Agent Scott. And I'm Sam the Provocateur. Sam the Provocateur? Hmm. That's right, folks. Yes, Sam the Provocateur. You are not hearing the dulcet tones of our Cam Smith. Due to scheduling issues, he could not make the recording, but stepping up to the mark for the first time on the show, Mr. Sam Rogers. Welcome aboard. Very happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's absolutely a pleasure to have you with us. Now, uh, Sam, join me for our Spy Master interview for you this week, and we are joined by Mr. Sebastian Foucan. Now, if you don't recognise the name, that's fair enough. You may recognise the character name of Mulaka from 2006's Casino Royale, or you'll know him as the man who gets chased up the scaffolding in the film during the fantastic free-running sequence. Now, Sebastian has a lot of film credits to his name. He also partly invented free-running and parkour as we know it today, but um, let's not hear it from us. Let's get it from the man himself. Sam, should we roll it? We're going to roll with it. Hit it. And joining us now on the show, one of the stars of this week's film, Casino Royale, the man of the hour, Mr. Sebastian Foucault. Sebastian, how are you doing today? I'm very well, thank you. Thank you for having me. And thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. And we're going to talk about Casino Royale mm -hmm. in a little bit. But I want to take us back like we usually do with our interviews and just get to know you a little bit. Because I, I've been doing my research on you and frankly, I'm fascinated because... The top line on your Wikipedia uh, page says, this is the chap who came up with the concept of free running and parkour. Mm -hmm. it, it, you are credited with basically inventing a art form and sport. That is a very high esteemed credit for anyone to have. So maybe just take us back to that and, and how you got involved and how it started. Yeah, so it's a shared credit. Uh, I, I didn't do it by myself. I've got a bunch of friends also when we started together in the late 80s. So uh, I always say I've been fortunate at the, at the, uh, to be at the right place at the right moment. And we have uh, this, uh, this mindset uh, of believing uh, in our dreams and uh, full of a superhero and things like that and adventure. And uh, yeah, as I say, like in the late 80s, my friend and I, we started to do this kind of a way of, or, of moving. So... Um, probably a form of escaping the society and stuff like that. So we wanted to go outside and just playing around and jumping, climbing and everything. And now we become uh, this global phenomenon called parkour or free running. So I, and that's a distinction I was trying to draw online. There's parkour and then there's free running. Now parkour is, is, is from a French word. I know that much. But what's the distinction yeah. between the two? Basically now it's almost the same. Um, you can say like some will still stay stick with the definition like parkour is a pure efficiency from from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. You know when you go for an, yeah, and uh, free running is more when you want to express yourself and you do flipping tricks. But in reality, uh, uh, the the most common name is parkour, mm -hmm. and uh, people do also flipping tricks doing parkour. So. There is a, oh, I think both of them kind of join. I think the, the name free running is less used. Mm. Um, uh, what I can say is now parkour is almost like a, a common word. Like if you say, I, I go jogging, you know, I'm going to do some jogging. Say I do parkour. Some people, you you may heard someone say free running or you go in France, you say people say I do ADD called art du, art du, art du déplacement. Mm -hmm. But the most common one is, is parkour. Now, I used to live on the South Bank of London, and there's a there's a skate park around there that I used to see a lot of chaps doing a bit of free running around. So I, I, yeah, I've... Uh, yeah. Do you know the bit by uh, down yeah, the South yeah, Bank? Yeah. yeah. It's a fun little area down there. I've, uh, I used to do yeah. a bit of skating yeah. myself, so I used to hang out down there. So that was... Uh, yeah, I know this place is very famous. They almost they almost wanted to get, take off the skate the skate place, right? Yeah, they wanted to... Well, at one point, they wanted to knock it down and just build more yeah, restaurants yeah, yeah. there, um, which would have been a, really, a horrid thing to yeah. do. It's a, it's a nice place. Yeah, yeah, and everyone who does park over there, and I've always been kicked out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I was going to say it's it's one of those things where you know parkour and free running. It seems just like that next level of, of when you are a kid, you always want to just climb on things and you know adventure and go and go to different places. And it just seemed like when free running became a big thing. Like I remember in the early to mid noughties when 
it started to, you know, to gain traction. And I remember, you know, watching, you know, kids TV and it would be on, I, I'm sure it was on like news round and it was on, you know, different shows and showcasing what is free running? What is park this brand new thing that no one's ever heard of? And it just gained so much traction so quickly. And I think it's just really exciting that it has developed so much into such a common thing now. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Yeah. It's just like, uh, the thing we do, we started with, uh, with passion. And then with everything we've been doing around, like we like always been a, a kind of ambassador. So I'm a global ambassador of my discipline. I try to show the the best uh, aspect of it and to show what it can bring to to everyone. Not only the spectacular or the risky thing is like uh, the idea of uh, reclaiming the space and be free, and also uh, the thing we used to do when we were a child. Like it's not just oh. Like, oh, you do parkour, I've never done that. I think everyone's done that, like uh, climbing, jumping, it's in our DNA. So it's just like to spread the the message, like uh, it's something we've got and we forgot. Because I, I grew up in more of a suburban area on the outskirts of London, so quite a lot of green mm-hmm. space. It wasn't as built up as when I moved into central London. Um, so for me, when I was growing up, it was climbing trees and running around the fields, that sort of expression of how I would get my energy out as a kid, basically ride my yeah. bike, climb trees. Did you grow up in more of a urban area? And then you, that, that energy had to be put to the use of on the streets more. Yeah. For, uh, where I grew up is more like, a middle class, middle, middle class. Uh, uh, there is like, uh, houses and stuff like that. There a lot of trees, a lot of grass. But also uh, very close, there is also building and and concrete. Mm-hmm. So it's a kind of a nice mix. Uh, I always feel like it's almost like it's been 50-50. But uh, definitely climbing trees was a big part of it. It's more like the society start to tend to draw pictures like, oh, it's urban. You know, mm-hmm. It's urban. But it's, for me, it's a human expression. It's not so much about being urban. It's like wherever you are, it's like this is what we can do. And everyone is like, when you were a child, uh, almost everyone, you remember, like, I've been climbing, I've been jumping. I did jump with my friends, you know. I've been swinging someplace. And it's only the parents. Some parents encourage the kids to, to express themselves and other mm-hmm. people say, could you come down here? Come down, okay? You're going to break something or you're going to break yourself, you know? And um, this is the whole, uh, whole dynamic. It's how you learn at that age. I fell off trees. Oh, yeah. I hurt, I hurt oh, yeah, myself, yeah. but... You know, you learn how to climb better and safer, really, from doing yeah. it, I think. Yeah, that's yeah, true. It's... Well, you know, Sam was just saying, it sort of beautifully leads me into this, like it was becoming a bigger thing. And around the early 2000s, it sort of hit the boom and, and people were taking notice of free running. And I know there was those sort of Jump London and Jump Britain documentaries they made. I, I remember mm-hmm. seeing some, I watched a couple of clips on YouTube as well, actually, just to get ready for this. But for you, what was the moment where people started taking notice of this form of expression? Uh, for me, the starting point was in France when I, we used to have a group called Yamakasi mm-hmm. uh, a long time ago. And uh, we did a, um, a TV program uh, in the Channel 2 in France called Stade 2. And that's where we had like a lot of response from people around because it was the first time it's been shown on TV. And uh, it's the first time from your town to reach a bigger audience, we saw the the response and how people just like, wow, what is that? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like sometimes you, you do something for you, it's natural, you do it with your friend, but then you've got the view from the ex- an external view and people start to say, wow, that's crazy. That's where you start to realize, oh, I've got something special. And uh, yeah, for us, that was the starting point. Then after we all uh, went to separate ways, and uh, that's where, for me, led me to uh, jump London, jump, jump Britain, because also maybe I sent a message to the universe. You know, I didn't like the idea of uh, the cliche, you know, like, oh, the people from the banlieue, instead of burning cars, you know, they're doing this daredevil thing, you know. Mm-hmm. For me, it's like, uh, and the media was really in love with that, uh, particularly in France, because in 1998, where we started, 1997, 1998, when we did the, the TV program, there is this kind of, uh, in France, uh, France win the World Cup with the football yep. World Cup. And it was kind of this uh, narrative of, uh, we call it black blanc beurre. It's like uh, black, uh, white, and uh, beurre is like Arabic, mm-hmm. kind of like unify 
woo, you know, and and then try to the the idea is good, but they try to force it too much. Right. So they try to that's like I say, it's like the banlieue, woo, instead of. But if you see where I grew up, it's not really uh like big bar of building and stuff like that. it was more like grass and trees and lake and stuff like that. but they really want to push this narrative and i didn't like that so i say you know what i'm gonna do only documentary sure and uh i don't do any cliche now i do only documentary that's where i've been approached with uh, uh optomen and channel four to do this uh documentary called jump london and the rest is history it's just the ball keep on rolling but as i say i send a strong message to the universe that i want to portrayed the reality of my daily life instead of something just cliche in terms of you know free running becoming a thing i think you know just in the general sense anyway it's it's something where it's like you see it in things like scene royale you see those documentaries that were made and also just in so much general media and i think you know we can talk a little bit later about like kind of like your overall you know thoughts on how it's progressed and evolved but in terms of by that point when it had kind of uh, started to become such a, a a modern you know normal thing for people to do like how how did you feel going from from that from just one of those people who originated it to suddenly oh it's it's now gaining popularity it's in the public eye because i mean that can be quite a shift when people start to think about oh you're the free running guy mm -hmm. uh yeah i saw you in that documentary uh you know like everything is very progressive you know you start from uh from where wherever you are and then you built up, you know, people start to recognize uh, like a local uh, local newspaper, then after Bigo TV and then so on and so on. And it's all about opportunities and what you uh, project, you know, mm -hmm. and people get attracted and say, oh, I want, I want to work with that person and that person. And then whatever you do is just like, but I believe like if you do good work, is this is what happened. But uh, the idea of recognition just, go with it you know just and uh i'm really down to earth for me it's just like my practice doing what i do the rest of it is just is just part of the game you know well i i was gonna lead into casino royale but there's a small part of connective tissue between the previous james bond film and casino royale mm -hmm. and yourself because mm -hmm. madonna starred in the previous bond film die another day and i do believe yeah. you worked with madonna before you did casino royale 2005 and 2006 in a music video and on tour is that right yeah uh yeah i i worked with her before uh i did the a video clip called hunger mm -hmm. and that's where the first time i met her i started to work with her i thought it was the only time i'm gonna work with her then i did james bond i work on james bond and then after they contacted me and say, almost in the same period, they contacted me and say, I want you to be on tour with me and work with me. So I said, yeah. So 2006 was pretty crazy. So I did the video clip, then uh, James Bond, and then straight away on tour six months. Wow. Yeah, I was watching some of the, uh, the tour like footage where you were practicing beforehand and, and getting the chore choreography down. That looked pretty intense. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I broke my wrist over there. So. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, what, yeah, what, what happened with that? One week before we start, I broke my wrist, so I had to do six months with a broken wrist. Oh, you actually still did it for six months? Oh, yeah, yeah. I made my wow. decision, so as I say, I don't blame anyone. It's no, just no. my decision. I know it was once in a lifetime to do experience, so I say, you know what? I go for it. <laughs> I won't go with the detail, but yes, I went through. <laughs> <laughs> You're still here? Yeah. Yeah, and and not many people can say that they've, they've toured with Madonna, so... Uh... Yeah. And we have a broken wrist as well, so I mean... Yeah, and also, like, I'm not a dancer, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I can dance with my friend, <laughs> that's, all I, that's how far it goes. But to be to perform with a, a, a superstar like Madonna, uh, she's an icon, you know? So probably two like this, they were Michael, Jack Michael Jackson, and then in the in a pop singing uh, realm, Michael Jackson and Madonna. Okay, there is a lot of great, great, great uh, artists, but people like really past the time, like long, long period. Yeah. No, absolutely. Well, then I guess that brings us on to Casino Royale because you had a very busy 2006 because that's the year that the film came out. Um, yeah. So let's let's go back to how this all started. How did you first get connected with the film? But I think they they heard about me probably after like. I'm not sure about the exact detail, 
but probably after I've done the documentary, you know, Jump Brayton. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think especially in UK, people knew who, who I was. I had my website and everything, so people can search for me. Um, uh, and I did also all the stuff around, but so people knew about me. And then they cast me, literally, they just contacted me with a secret email, kind of, you know. Very James like, Bond. You know, yeah, because, you know, like, but all the project with Madonna it was the same. They don't tell you straight away who you're going to work with and what it's going to be about because they don't know how it's going to turn up. Mm. So it's just like almost fishing, you know. And uh, at the beginning, this, this is it. It's like, we want to work with you in a project, a movie. Are you interested? Yeah, why not? What is it? Then they invited me in Pinewood Studio. Even when I arrived in Pinewood Studio, I still didn't know it was about James Bond, you know. And at this period, I was not so um, uh, aware of James Bond, so I didn't associate Pinewood with James Bond. This is just this place called Pinewood. I go to Pinewood. And then this long alleyway, when you see all the post, the wallpaper, the poster of of all the James Bond, now my friend starts saying, uh, I think it's for James Bond. So. Really? That's where I start to, to connect, and I, when I start to connect. Well, that's actually a, a perfect time to ask the question as well. I mean, you said you didn't know too much about James Bond, but it sounds like you were familiar with the franchise at that point. Oh, yeah, of course. It's, it's hard to escape, isn't it? It's, it's kind of... Yeah, everywhere. yeah. It's, it's known. It's like, it's so iconic. It's known everywhere. The number one spy is James Bond. So everyone know, know. My my parents grew up with it. So, you know, you've got several generations, several who grew up with you can have like uh, Sean Connery, then you have, uh, and others like, uh, but you got Roger Moore. So me, I was more Roger Moore when I was kid. Mm -hmm. That's the Roger Moore era. Then after you had a uh, Pierce, Bros Pierce Brosnan, you see? And, uh, and then after Daniel Craig, but I forgot a few in, in between. <laughs> <laughs> There's a few listeners that are like screaming at their podcast right now, but uh, that's absolutely fine. You were in a James Bond film and they weren't. So that's all good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. and i'm very happy because roger moore's my favorite yeah. bond so i'm very happy that that, that you're on the side as well um my favorite to be honest with you my favorite is daniel craig i'll probably bias but that's fair my favorite i, li I like sean connery for me sean connery is literally a yeah uh i grew up with roger moore because there was a sense of humor with everything he was doing mm -hmm. Pierre brosnan i respect but it wasn't really my era for me it's like mm, not so much and Daniel Craig, I think, is literally uh, re-energized the franchise, especially when you had like the Jason Bourne kind of uh, uh, era when it's like, okay, this is the new guy, the new thing. And I think Daniel Craig did it brilliantly with his charisma and everything he did for me. Just like, a... there we go. Well, okay, so you've turned up on the set of Pinewood. You found out it's a James Bond film. Have they gone through what they're looking for from you at this point and what they want you to bring to the project? Oh, yeah, yeah. They they, they, they knew, like, uh, in the script, they knew there is a, a terrorist who need to escape from uh, from Bond. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to something fresh and new, obviously, started. And that's, that's why they wanted to have a parkour in this. Like, it would be good to have a sequence of parkour. The question is, could we do something with, uh, because they want to move away from the green screen mm. as much as possible to be absolutely like uh, real, like the old days, you know, like uh, this is it. And that was the, and that was, yeah, that was it. There's something synonymous about, you know, Bond and, you know, chase scenes, whether that's, you know, being vehicles or, you know, to actually have one person running after someone else. So to add in this element, I think was so clever of them to do it. It was such the right time to do it. Um, my my question on, on that just kind of initially, like, was, was there any, you know, kind of initial setup as how exactly it would go? Did they have something choreographed or was this something that you had to really influence because I can imagine that a lot of free running and parkour is very kind of of the moment. It's not, you know, too heavily planned. Whereas this, yeah. obviously it's going to have to be retakes and reshoots and having to do things again and again. So, I mean, how much work had to go into that initial, even just pre before even walking onto a set? A lot of work. Yeah. First, the day when I arrived in Pinewood, we already with Gary Powell, we already started to practice with the car, uh, what we can do with, men with car together like we had, had a harness mm -hmm. and i was jumping on cars and car moving all over the place it's probably the that was probably the 
the time where they decide they want to work with me because I, I didn't know at this time, but they also bring other people who does parkour from uh, from UK. So I think uh, I knew it later on, mm. but basically, you know, <laughs> so they did the, they did almost the casting like there. They wanted to know, can I listen to the instruction? You see, can they, can they speak to me because <laughs> I'm French? So yeah, I think this is where it started. But I remember from day one, also even the crane. There was the, when I arrived, they were already doing the rear saw for the crane in Pinewood. They had the they had the like something really high, and the, and then everything was set up the same. And they start to rear with the wires, the jumping from the crane. Even for me, I said, "Whoa!" I was like like a kid in the kindergarten for me said oh i want to do that so no no we, we need you over there so i was walking but the stunt guy was started to to practice the the jumping was there kind of spinning off of sam's question there obviously they they had an idea of what they wanted and that was realism and that's really the influence i think of jason bourne had come out a few mm-hmm. of those films have come out by this point and sort of how die another day was received and they wanted that realistic element they're bringing you in one of the people who who invented the concept um they had some ideas, they had the crane, they had some cars ready for you, but were there things you brought along and ideas that sort of made it to the finished product, product in the end, in the finished film? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, a lot. Uh, everything uh, from a stunt point of view was from Gary Powell, so he, he, he had all his idea from the truck, like everything you, with machinery, it's Gary Powell, for <laughs> sure, but the technique, how to get from this point to this point, they had no idea, so I had to show them which technique goes where and which one is the most appropriate. Because uh, especially now, parkour is really fancy and stuff like that. And me, I say, no, no, this is the way to make it efficient and it's real. Like I've been chased for real. I'm not doing a backflip because it's, it, it just put away the idea of James Bond is a serious, is someone serious. So um, all this stuff is uh, when I, for example, I don't know if you remember when I do what I call a, a cat pass, you know, it's like this over a table. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's yep. like a big diving over the table that was my idea so i bring the table that was my idea also to add people like working on it zzz, all this stuff mm-hmm. because i say to make it more realistic mm-hmm. because i do this move like, a table yeah. in the middle of everything so it's like people are working but i show them to uh, uh martin campbell sure yeah uh, yeah martin campbell arrive and i show him I, I bring the table and i say this is the move i can do so he liked the move and I say, yeah, and I, that's why I say we can put it here and you can do all this stuff. So the table was me. Also, when I jumped down, you know, this kind of elevator. Uh, I was going to bring up that moment. I think it's great. That's one yeah. of my favorite parts. Yeah, the tick tac down, that was my idea. So literally, I try in my head, it was like, it's probably the last time I'm going to, you know, you can't think naive, but it's probably the last time I'm going to work in a movie. So let's put everything as a legacy. Mm-hmm. There, everything is there. So I put the tic tac, I, I do the arm jump, mm-hmm. all the basics move we've got in my discipline, I put them in. That's why, like the run up from the girder to the um, uh, to the pipe and the the crane, like to go to the crane. That's a we call cat leap. So that's it. We've got the tic tac, we've got the the plyo, the jumping bounce bounce from uh, the elevator. Uh, I did the slide. I love slides, so I put slide. They even put the slide for Daniel Craig. I was like. Ah, that was my but anyway <laughs> so they put slide i did the going through uh i do remember oh, so many stuff like uh there is also something also they cut off but there is a i don't know if you remember but i was uh, um in the ladder i'm shooting with the something in the ladder yeah climbing the ladder shooting we did a kind of a jackie chan maybe they find it too cheesy but normally i climb the ladder and i kick the girder and i halfway i turn and I land to the other, so I do girder, uh, climb the um, the ladder, mm-hmm. and then I pick, turn, land like this, and then I shoot. So all these parts, they cut it off. So I was a bit upset. I didn't know movie for for me. It's like a word. That's my, you know, like it's it's a work. I work on it. I did it. I was proud. And so I don't know it's not. You watch the movie. Oh, where is the part? But anyway, so yeah, to answer to your question, yeah, a lot of technique which I didn't know. The wall run also. Mm-hmm. You know when the when the trucks arrive, okay, how do you get from here to there, to the top? So it's like uh, kicking the wall and just going on top. That's uh, the idea. Also, the climbing the crane, all this stuff. They didn't know. They didn't know what to do about that. Uh, also, yeah, also, I told them from the beginning, it was with uh, Alexander White, the second unique director, mm-hmm. because I work a lot with him, because uh, uh, Martin Campbell was really busy with the first unique director 
working because we're shooting almost in the same time. Mm -hmm. They were working with Daniel and uh, with uh, Katrina Moreno. They were like the beach and stuff like that. They were working. We were doing like uh, all the rehearsal for this. So when Ale uh, when Martin Campbell arrived, can see okay what's in there. So uh, yeah, so with Alexander White, I explained to him the idea of a track shot. I said, this is, this is my expression. You know, I'm, I'm a runner. I like to run. Mm -hmm. So what I need is a long, 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 uh, like you can put a long ride and I show you what I can do. So that's what they did when we went to Shanty Town. You know, there was like a lot of rain and I show them how fast because it was brilliant because for the first time I could literally run for real. Usually you always slow down a little bit, but now I could literally go, even I had to slow down, but I can literally show what, what can happen with motion because it's all about motion. That's what put, bring all the dynamic, the motion, also tracking shot from the, from the sky with a helicopter, all this stuff. That was not my idea, but all this stuff gives, give certain motion, you know? Well, it's definitely a step up from a channel four documentary to a big budget James <laughs> Bond film. So yeah, being able to capture the actual essence of that sort of run can be achieved because they have more money and more cameras and more setups. So yeah. it was the best place really to showcase your skills is, is that film for sure. Yeah, 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 definitely. But also like, even sometimes I'm thinking like more could be done. Even now, like people see Casino Royale, but it's, it's just like, I didn't have the opportunity to show more. Now it's been years and years and years, but I knew when I did it, it's like, oh my God, there is so much can be done with all the technique they've got. Because now they can go CGI and stuff like that, but still human being, you can see parkour. We can do so much. It's just like the good collaboration with the stunt, stunt team, uh, cameraman, uh, Eli, uh, DOP. Everyone's, everyone's got the artistic vision. You can come up with, with great stuff. And that's, we've, that's what we've done with Casino Royale. It's not only my work, it's a teamwork, a team effort. Yeah, and I think what really works about that sequence is just is how dynamic it is. It doesn't feel like it's just really cut together. It feels like it flows very naturally. Mm -hmm. And I love that kind of like um, uh, how smooth you are going through it. So you are everything that you do is just is just seems like perfection. Whereas you know Daniel Craig and his Bond, it's very rough. Oh, I'm just gonna, I'm I'm gonna. He's just flew, you've just flew through this hole in the wall. He's just going to smash through it. Yeah. He's going to slam down into things, but you're just like gliding yeah. through. And I think that's the great thing about it. And it really showcases your character and his character in it. So I think it's just, you know, that from my perspective is just a really fantastic thing. Yeah, because also with, with uh, like with movies, uh, of, of course you've got dialogue and you've got uh, like actors, but I didn't have any, any dialogues. And the the all the whole idea is how could you? It's almost like the whole time with uh, Charlie Chaplin, you know, or Buster Keaton. Mm -hmm. Is how could you express yourself with just movement and tell tell something about who you are and what you do? We can see straight away James Bond is is got determination. You know, it's everything he does. It's about determination. It's like his focus, laser focus, and that's why he's so good. And that's why they show it through the even sometimes it can be comical, but when you go through the through the through the, the the wall and everything when he jumped from the from the uh, crane and then he land like this you can see like and then after he land and then he stum stumble and land again and then he shook his head and just keep on going that already tells you okay who is this new James Bond in a few sequence you've got a clear idea of what you're gonna get in the whole everything after this is who is this guy is okay and and you on in it and my character is always like you can see like how the hell is gonna get that guy you know because wow you know and then that's this confrontation sets everything after for for james bond you say okay i can root for this for this uh, for this special agent because wow is is tough <laughs> it's tough you know you can't escape him that's the whole idea well the the, the classic adage is show don't tell and they yeah. showed you that this was a new James Bond, yeah, by having him bust down that wall because that's uh, <laughs> that that scene never gets old. Yeah, you see, yeah. No, so I was just gonna say, and because you know, you, you have the pre-title sequence, you have the title sequence, then you have this, and you know, this is the first big set piece of this new era, and so they really needed it to be kind of to hit with audiences, and you can see in the promotion of this film when it came out. I remember, you know. 
when the trailers were coming out that this was one of the focuses. So obviously there's a lot of importance on this anyway. Um, but then also it's good when you actually watch scene, you know, you are very reactionary. It's all looking at what your face is doing and, oh, you've like, okay. And then suddenly, oh, he's still following me. He's still behind me. And you, you can see it like in your performance. I think I remember there's one shot on the crane where you look back and you just seem so angry that he's followed you all the way up. And I think, you know, having that verticality as well, like, which is very rare for, you know, a chase scene is to, for people to go up. It's always either people going down. Yeah. Um, and I think that's one of the things that makes, you know, the free running element of this really stand out. And I think hold up 16 years later. Yeah. Yeah. For me, like, like I said, James Bond was, uh, I've been fortunate, as I said, to, to be in the James Bond movie. It's amazing because it's an iconic thing. But also, uh, I could have done parkour in it and it will not have been, been that good. As I said, it's a teamwork. Uh, there is a lot of stuff I'd be interested in uh, knowing. It's like, if you think of it, even story, story wise, storytelling wise, it's like, like you said, uh, don't tell, like sh show and don't tell. It's like, it's a cliffhanger. It's, we go up and up and up. It's like, where are, how far are they going to go? Like, <laughs> up and up and up and up. And then they go down and, and then you, you just, for, for an audience who's watching, it's like, whoa. See, like, because we start from the Chant, uh, Shanty Town. You know, like he's chasing me from shanty town, and he goes super quick through the jungle. So like, ah, you go like this. Then after I go through uh, the fence, then after through the sand. So it's obstacle, and obstacle, and obstacle, and it's still behind. And then I hide myself behind the behind the the house, like the like the no the the pipe. I got big pipe, and there is the house, and he's coming with a truck behind. But already here, he's like. Is he, is he gone? And then, no, no, I'm getting even stronger. You know, like, now I come with a truck. It's just like, oh, my God, he's with a truck. So I need to go. You see, like, how they escalate? Mm -hmm. It's it's amazing. Like, when you think of it, it's like escalate. And then after you escape, I, I climb up, okay? But no, with the truck, you just smash everything. So I'm going at you with everything. Then I keep climbing. It's, it's just when you think of it, when you look at it, it's like, wow. It's, uh, in terms of action, it's full. It's just like, you just go, woof. Well, we've uh, we've skimmed over two things that I want to address. Firstly, mm -hmm. you aren't an actor and you're acting in this film. And as Sam said, it's terrific because you are showing your frustration yeah. with James Bond keeping up with you. Because in this imaginary yeah. world, you, you know, you, as you yeah. say, you're a, you're a terrorist, but you're also very skilled at free running. Clearly, this person, you think you've got his number, but no, 007 is keeping up with you. And you are able through just little shots, little reaction shots to show your frustration. How was that having to act along with the free running at the same time? But first of all, I'm an artist. Usually I've got painting everywhere, but I, I love, I love when I do something, I like to do it fully. So as soon as I knew I was in this uh, thing, I, I, I wanted to know what acting is about and the whole universe of, uh, of acting, you know, mm -hmm. so about expression. And I start to realize very quickly, like you're going to be on big screen and if it's a teeny tiny detail, people can see, you know, even if I look from here to there on big screen, it's, it's put on. So when I start to realize this, I say, okay, how, how can I work? And, and I realize also it's all in your head. So people can see what you got in your head. And, and for me, all I had to do is to use my imagination to 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 create something was real. For example, I will give you an example. Uh, when you look at the movie, I'm the bad guy, right? Mm -hmm. But in my head, I was the good guy. You don't see it, but for me, the person who was with a truck is someone who killed someone in my family in real life. Mm -hmm. So I've got a gun, and in my head, it's like as soon as I saw this guy because he's fast. I'm going to shoot him. I'm going to kill him because he killed all my family. That's what I had in my head. The camera shows something. I tell you what I had in my head. <laughs> then after you say, oh, that's good. He looks like, oh my God, he looks really, he wants, we can see he wants something. It's just because I use my imagination to tell a story, which I had to really believe. Then I have, to, you have two options also. You can run with the idea of, I'm going to chase someone, which now you're dominant. Okay. So your expression is very dominant because I'm in control. And then after you can reverse by running like now you've got uh, aliens behind you or something like a, a tiger and something like that. Then if you're really good, good imagination, so, you see, now you just like, where is this? It can be anything, a pit bull or anything, but it's, like, oh, it's going to bite my, my, my legs and stuff like that. Camera will capture everything. All you have to do is just put, do your expression. Like if it's running, just run. 
but don't run just like it's your friend behind. Run is, and you have, you can pick up with everything it's carry for you. You pick up one, and then you use it. That's that basically my trick. That's what I did for for the whole sequence. It's like okay, now it's behind me. I've been running for. It has to be realistic. I've been running for hours, and I'm quite good, and it's still there. So it's like a scary movie, you know. When <laughs> you say, "Where is it? It's behind you." But where? Where? You know, you know, kind of this kind of stuff. Like that. That's where. That's how it works. You bring this just in your head. Well, you, you you bore the weight of that scene, I think, in terms of some of the acting, because you had to show the frustration. And you know that this whole Sam said this whole entrance of Bond. We're trying to sell a new Bond. This is a mm -hmm. different energy of James Bond. Um, but the man who had the most amount of weight in this film is Daniel Craig, and we've not spoken about him yet because you, you did get to work with him on set. You did many scenes with him uh, in that yeah. in that short sequence. And I wanted to ask you, what was it like working with Daniel, and what was sort of his vibe, and how was he dealing with it? Because there's a lot of pressure on him at that point. <laughs> yeah, I think um, I think he did he did hide it pretty well. <laughs> I have to say, <laughs> because at the beginning when we arrived in Czech Republic, when we work, uh, it was the first time I met him. It was in Czech Republic in Prague. That's where we started to to film in a studio for the for the embassy. Mm -hmm. And uh, we started to do the real soul together and so I think there is some footage where we, we see, I think there is a documentary where they saw the footage we're in, in Prague. And, uh, but the first approach, I think it's very humble, you know, very down to earth. It's like we're teamwork. You know, we know we have a task, all, everyone has a task. Everyone is professional. So everyone has to do something. No, there is no ego, but I'm sure there is movie where there were ego involved, but I can assure you in, uh, in uh, Casino Air, there is no ego involved. It was pure work. It's like uh, uh, everyone has something to do. And Daniel come exactly like that, like work ethic, come early, uh, nothing special like, oh, he's got a special treatment. No, he arrived exactly like us. He had his jogging and stuff like that. And we just rehearse always fake gun and toys and stuff like that. And we go slow motion and de decompose everything bit by bit and work on and then separately and then together. And, and then that's how you work. You start to work together. But the whole journey for him must be like crazy because I think he did the layer cut before. I never mm -hmm. heard about him before. Uh, for me, it was, uh, if it was Pierce Brosnan, maybe I would say, oh, I know that guy, you know. But I've never, I haven't seen much of him. I didn't know. And, uh, but how big he became after, <laughs> it's like, it's, it's like, uh, it's completely uh, different, but the amount of pressure for, uh, because also we all have a stunt double, but man, he did a lot, you know, like, uh, because people will say, oh yeah, did he do everything? I can tell you, Daniel did a lot and he hurt himself. That's the proof also. He hurt his teeth, he hurt her, like, pfft. but we all have, I, I, I had cut here, cut there. That's where you you know like we're all in the same page you know uh, and uh, yeah yeah for me and then also uh, you've got the, the newspaper so they try to get any single bit of everything so they yeah it won't be good I think there was something like because he was blonde or something like yeah. that I did you not know, like that, that. It's, it's, yeah yes they they will pick to be honest I think it's, it's the same for everything wherever you are if you start to be the number one people will pick up of whatever you've got beard oh yeah, yeah i don't like his beard whatever you know and he went through that he went through all this stuff and uh, people start to to pinpoint everything and even to judge before he even started to, to prove anything and that's why i think it, it must have been a relief for him when people say oh that's brilliant because uh all he can do is put his put everything and he, he and he did he works he works crazy on it he must be tired like uh, like emotionally physically it must be a lot but that's more a question for him. But I, I can assume, like, I can imagine, like, for him, it's, a, oh, it's tough. Well, we, we've spoken to a number of um, martial artists and stunt performers that work with um, Jason Bourne actor Matt Damon. We've done a lot of interviews with yeah. those films. And they all speak to his work ethic and how well he took, even in Bourne Identity, to doing martial arts and, and, and a lot of fight sequences and really dedicating himself to the actual training of it, not just actually performing, but yeah. actually getting physical shape, which is another part people don't know. Like It takes months, years of determination to get to that sort of shape. It's not something you can do in a day. Um, yeah, yeah. What was Daniel like to sort of train with in that sense? Did you get a lot of time to you know, go through the moves and how did he take to free running? Because that's a new thing to him. 
uh, to be honest, it did, we didn't exchange much on, on Fearling because this character was like more running. He doesn't sure. have to do special, special move. Uh, I knew uh, Daniel came with his personal trainer. So they were all the time together. Um, so I think he's, I don't know, he must have trained like, I never really asked that because as soon as you start to work, you're in a working environment. But you can see, if you look at the footage of a uh, movie, Layer Cake, probably was the one he just finished, yep. and how he become like, it's completely different. You can see there is transformation. And there is a seriousness about, I'm going to take this character seriously, and I'm going to do it for real. So it, it, it trained a lot. There is so much to do. Like there is the weaponry, uh, I can't even tell, like acting, uh, physicality. Yeah, but you you can see like even, Nobody know you like as I say. If you're clever enough, you just watch. Say, oh yeah, there is work. It didn't just turn up. Uh, just like I say, oh, yeah, I'll do that. No, 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 no. It's like uh, you can see there is dedication right there, and he deserve it. Like that's for me. That's why that's people who earn my respect because I've seen it. Mm -hmm. I've been there. Mm -hmm. I've seen it. So okay, no matter what people's gonna say, uh, he never treat me like with a condescendent, like really high and stuff. I like, always same level. I even went to see him because at some point I said, okay, it's good. People trust me a lot. Like, that's great. But no one asked me, like, where should I look with the camera? You know, I did documentary, but filming is different. Mm -hmm. So even I say to you, I use my imagination, whatever. But at some point I see he was sitting and I say, okay, I need, I'm going to ask him because <laughs> everyone assumes I'm an actor. I don't know everything. So I asked him, <laughs> I said, hey, uh, when you look at, we were about to shoot, like literally we were about to film. like, right? And I said, uh, when you're in front of the camera, where do you look? Like, and he came and said, okay, you see when the screen is here, you need to look here because if you look there, then I said, oh, okay, okay. That's a few tips I had, but that was enough because he gave me the, the tip and I always remember, I said, yeah, you look here because he looks like you look in front of camera, but don't look straight into. So all this teeny tiny thing, I said, okay, I get it. And I said, thank you. So oh, you're welcome. And then I was, oh, get back to my work. <laughs> get running. But you see, yeah. we all have our stress and his own stress. I had mine because for me, it's like, they all pretend, they all think like, it's going to be great, which is good. But sometimes I would have, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Even the crane. I never practice on crane. People say, oh, it does parkour is good. It does parkour is going to be fine. For me, it's like, hello. Like, uh, I've never been on a crane. I never practice on a crane. The girder. Like, every day I go on a girder. The new generation have a lot of selfies and stuff like that. Mm. But my generation, mm. no. We, I jump, I climb it, but not that high. For me, it's like, Pfft. So, yeah. Everyone had their stuff to do. Well, I read online uh, that you actually were afraid of heights. So that must have been quite yeah. tough. The, the, the crane sequence yeah. in particular. That's uh... oh. <laughs> like, you know, the, the sentence like fake it to make it. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> the master. The master <laughs> oh. is here. Oh, my God. Because, OK, I'm really I'm good at what I'm doing. OK, mm -hmm. um, but I know I've got vertigo. And uh, I knew James Bond was an opportunity. Again, it's once in a while. Like, you you never had that ever again. So even people say, oh, do, uh, are you afraid of height? You will say, yes, I'm afraid, so I don't want to. I pass. It will never happen. You just say, you know what? I'm going to figure it out. That's exactly what happened with me. And I was like, uh, I think every night I was dreaming of it. I said, how high is it? How big? How am I going to do that? Like, they asked me, like, Barbara Bocoli say, uh, do you think you can do something like they've got a, a model of the girder and stuff? Do you think you can do something on it? And for me, it's like, it's, it's lie, but it's not, it's not lie. I believe I can find something, but I didn't really know what, you know, I say, do you think you can do something here? And so I was like, yeah. Uh, but in my head, it's like, oh my God, <laughs> for me, it's like, what, <laughs> what is that? You can see like the teeny tiny model. You can see the size of it. It's like, okay, but I did it. <laughs> It, uh, but I had my plan. Like I was like, okay, week one I go this level one, week two I go level two, week three I go. Th that that was how I set up. But it wasn't like that. I think we, by week two I was already on top. They already bring you on top because they have stuff to do. I was like, Pfft. and you look to the side. Oh my god, I see people. <laughs> I was like, what? Well, luckily, luckily the film is out there now, and it looks like yeah. you're not afraid of heights. So technically. No one would know if I, if people didn't keep bringing yeah. it up. So that's my fault, really. Yeah, and and the beauty is I can explain also what I did. That's why also in my academy I can explain. See, someone say of oh, I've got fear of height and thinking like oh for me I've got I'm a daredevil I've got no fear. I say no no I can teach you how you can overcome some fear because I I had to I had mm -hmm. my back against the wall 
and I had to figure it out. And uh, and I did. I did everything I could. I did yoga. I had breathing. I I come early. I say to the guy, okay, yeah, yeah, I need to do something. And I stay. Sometimes like they had lunch break. They all leave. I say, no, no, I'm staying. I force myself to stay so it become my place, my house, because there is the only option. Because if I leave, like if I leave for me, each time I come, so oh my god, that's scary. But I had to make this place my my place. So we, we did game also with the guy. I remember like like um, racing along girders, stuff like all this stuff release some tension, you know. I don't know how you. Well, I don't know how you did it, my friend. Uh, it's even. I, I'm not that bothered with heights, and I think I would be bothered with that height. But uh, kudos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We interrupt this program to bring you a special report. Calling all agents. Independent podcasting, much like the spy game, requires considerable resources. Whether it's research, equipment, hosting, or of course constructing a top secret volcano lair we're putting out the call for your support. That's right, as you may know, we've activated the Spy Hearts Patreon, home of our ever-growing lineup of Agents in the Field episodes where we decode non-spy films from your favorite spy actors and full film commentaries with more intel than a Basil Exposition briefing. Cam, what have we got in our crosshairs this month? Scott, it's commentary time, so we're gonna get inverted with Christopher Nolan's Tenet. And if that sounds delicious, then become a true spy hard today and join the circus at patreon.com slash spy But before this message self-destructs, Cam, resume the spy jinx. I mean, I think a lot of people wouldn't be aware as well is that, you know, in preparation for something like this, everyone, you know, a lot, a lot of people must think, oh, it's all about physical, physicality, training, 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 like body, body, body. But you know, it is, you know, a mental thing as well. You really need to get your mind in check to prepare because it's not just you're doing that. You're doing it on repeat. It's long shooting days. Um, so I guess you know, it's good that you, despite you know, you being quite new to an element like that, that you managed to kind of compose yourself and do things like yoga and actually take time to kind of visualize things and go right okay this is how i'm going to do it and even if it didn't go the exact way you wanted to you still actually got to that level and i think that's a really impressive thing and that what a lot of people would strive to do yeah yeah thank you very much yeah it's true and when you so you've got the support of your team like if you're by yourself doing a task is one thing but when you start to instead of being competitive and see right now when you start to embrace people as a team you've got support you look you just like the screen you see this but you look to the side and you got this one so yeah you know and it's like a team effort and it gives you energy you know like you all work together and i say we're all professionals so i always knew where to be where i should be where is the cue uh uh very uh, filming is is a is a is the world of precision basically people see this but it's, <laughs> it's all about being precise and you know if you miss one thing we have to do it again so all this stuff, and it's not only you, it's so many things. There is like, we were like some moment where I was on top of a, I, I, I went out, I went uh, downstairs like to to do my warm up. You know, I like to warm up far away. Mm -hmm. I'm pump, 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 pump. And I say, okay, now I'm ready. Lift me over there. And then I'm, I'm like full, I'm ready. Oh my God, they did that. I go like, it's like they lift you because you don't climb to the top, you know, like for the girl, uh, for the, for the crane, you climb. I have to climb like this. But for the girder, they lift you with a they lift. It's a lift. They put you with all the camera crew. They put you there, and then after the the crane, they leave. And then you say, "See ya," and you're this little, <laughs> teeny tiny ledge and just like that waiting. Okay. But when you're warm, you want to do it right now. Let's say I say you have to do the jump. You know, there is a moment where you can. It's like a window. I said now, now, now. But filming is different. So there is some moment where I have to wait, like for ages and so because there is one cloud in front of the of the there's a blue sky the uh, the sun is only one cloud it's because there is not so much wind it's just so slow it's like, we wait Seb, wait and i was like oh my god and then after because you wait so long you become stuck mm -hmm. and almost like oh, i can't move anymore and then suddenly you say okay everyone's ready and three two one it's oh my god the the adrenaline the energy is just like to the roof <laughs> When I remember, it's like poof, it's just crazy. But that's kind of a souvenir I've got from this. Yeah, um, I've got two questions left about Casino Royale. Yeah, uh, the first one is if we're just thinking about this, this is your first time in a major motion picture, this is your first time 
acting. And this is yes. also your first time wearing prosthetics. Yep. How was that as well? Because you had to have all that around your eye. Um, and that's uh, surely that's obscuring some of your vision. And I imagine yep. vision is quite important when you're running <laughs> into things. I, honestly, when she, I remember when they would start to do it, I would say, I thought she's going to do a little bit. And then she started to keep gluing and gluing. So, okay, that's it. <laughs> I didn't want the, that to happen because I respect everyone's work. You know, they got an idea, you hear. So. But at some point you start to see like, when she did like stitches here, I say, I say, okay, that's enough now. Cause I say to her, like, I need to, I need to perform and I need to see what I'm doing. So we, I might like to save my face to have just, done. <laughs> because I think if I didn't say stop, I don't know how it will end up. But yes, I had, I had to do this with this, but to be honest, it was okay. After you get used to, so you just, you, you go with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, the last one from me, and I, I'll throw it to Sam afterwards, is if we're looking at Casino Royale now, we, we're, we're talking about it close to 20 years in, in the rearview mirror at this point. When you look back on it, what is your favorite moment? It could be something from the final film or, or a memory from being on set. But what is the memory that you go to in your head? What is the thing you are fondly thinking about? Whew. I think the whole experience was amazing. It's really, really, really extremely hard to take away one bit from here. Uh, yeah, I think the whole experience, I think the, what shocked me the most is how quickly when it's finished, how it goes quick, mm -hmm. everyone goes back to their business. I was not used to that. You know, I thought like, uh, I don't know, maybe I was in fairy tale, but like you, we keep in touch, we see each other. <laughs> you know, when it's cut, it's cut. It's a bye bye, see you, everyone's go. It's, it was pretty, pretty intense. But what I will always remember is the family, feeling it, we were not a family but uh barbara was like amazing literally like like uh she was really kind really uh, like i think what i felt it was open-handed you know you can work in big blockbuster i've heard it's different this was a completely different experience for me but you can imagine could you imagine like i've never done any acting okay of course i do parkour okay but there is so many things I've never done. They never ask me. It's total trust. It's like, mm -hmm. what? And, and open-handed. What do you want? What do you need? It's not in a big movie with a lot of money like this. I don't think it's, you, you can find this uh, again. So that's why for me, I, I keep this really in my heart because it was just, it was just fantastic. A fantastic adventure. I mean, I, I was going to just say, because I know, um, obviously, after after the chase, you, you are at the embassy and, you, and there's that shoot out, and then you're basically just being railed on a lot. And he's just, Daniel Craig's just grabbing you. He's like tucking you through, you know, windows and all this stuff. And it's just a bit crazy. But, um, but I mean, you do have a memory. It's a memorable end to you. And it's a, mem it's a memorable, you know, end to this whole sequence. I mean, how'd you find that? Because I guess there's lots of, um, you know, things where you do have like, bits of you know which what i presume is fake glass and you know you know elements you know puffing off explosions and things like that like how is that because that's so for you you're not really doing anything you're just kind of having to sit there and and take it or be dragged along for it i mean how's that compared to the actual chase uh what do you mean the last bit you're talking yeah yeah uh, yeah me, just at, at the embassy everything was amazing because for me it's like you see how it's how it's cooked you know mm -hmm. Because we started by the end, you know, we didn't do the chase first. Yeah. We went in Czech Republic. We did uh, all the where uh, James Bond killed me and everything. We started with that first. And for me, like, that put me straight into it because this place, like, we were in Czech Republic minus 20. And they, re they recreate a place where we're in Bahamas. And it was, uh, um, uh, no, 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 for, for them, it's Madagascar. Yeah. Okay. We film in, we film in, in, bah uh, in Bahamas, but so they recreate, uh, Madagascar, like super hot. It wasn't hot at all. <laughs> and then you look at through the window, which the people who paint, they paint the background behind. <laughs> they didn't CGI it. They just oh. paint behind. For me, I was, I'm an artist. For me, I was like, wherever I was, I was like, oh my God. I, I was watching like like sugar glass. Oh wow, that's so cool! And then they said, "Here is the guns." So, oh my god! I was like, I was like a kid. And then when they're coming, I'm serious. Oh yeah, good. But in my head, I was like, 
all over the place. And then, yes, for me, it's just like, uh, uh, yeah, Daniel Craig hold me like this push me there and then but you see how it's cooked you know how it's how it's made and how they film and where they take the angle and stuff like that uh getting completely wet and change the change the clothes do it again and again and people like fire is it ta, 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 ta. and i had the sound of like um uh, something like uh ex like explode in my legs because they shoot me in my legs mm -hmm. i don't know if you remember that so mm -hmm. all this stuff for me so oh my god how are you gonna do that so it's, like, <laughs> it's for me it's just like you can imagine like any anyone who's never been in a movie i put you just right there you have to be professional but you can't help to just look everywhere so oh my god that's real that's this the desk the book and i was oh that's real book that's everything what was fake what was real uh, all the time for me it was just like uh i would never forget that it's just like pff, it's just like the magic of a movie it's crazy i promise i only had two questions left but you've prompted one in my head now a lot of people we've had on the show have not necessarily taken things, but like have a memento or something from the set. You never don't have to disclose necessarily what it is, but do you have something from the shoot? Yeah, I've got two things. Go on. I've got I've got my shoes mm -hmm. when I run, and I've got uh, and I've got the bullet when Daniel Craig shoot me. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's the two things I kept. As soon as, you know, like when he shot, bang, it's tell you how much I was aware of everything. I knew it was like, you know, after he says, it's a wrap, it's finished. I knew that when he, sh when he shot me, I was on the floor. Mm -hmm. And then I say, cut. As soon as I say cut, I, went, oh, <laughs> I get the bullet. <laughs> so, um, I can show you if you want. Sure, sure. Oh, yes. Here we go. Oh my, there they are. Oh wow, oh my goodness. I still have my shoes, I keep them. And that's the one, the bullet. So it's, uh, yeah, it's like, uh, en français on dit la douille, you know, it's the one who, it's the, the, when he the, shot yeah, the shell, the discarded it's, bullet, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so wow. That's the two things I get. That's, yeah. that's, that's excellent. That's a lovely yeah. little, uh, little, little memory there. That's a great thing to keep. Yeah, 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 yeah. I will never forget that. For me, it's just like, a, it, it was, uh, as I say, I'm, I'm fully aware of who we are and that life can be really, really short. And uh, I know uh, I'm very aware of how when it's memorable, when it's something like, man, this is over. Mm -hmm. You need to take, like, take it, like, take it fully. Like, and that's why I kept this stuff. I said, okay, I kept the shoes and I kept this one and it's forever now. I, I, I was going to follow up, but I think you've summed it up perfectly. Like that was a moment in your life that will live in infamy and, and mm. in cinematic infamy. Like you you have put yeah, together, you. you're part of not only Bond history, but potentially the best Bond film ever made and potentially the most exciting wow. sequence in any Bond film. So that's wow, something to treasure. And this is coming from two lifelong Bond fans. I don't know what our opinion means, but hopefully it means something. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, it means a lot. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah appreciate I want I, I just wanted to add sorry so just that you know as an as an artist as well and as someone who you know has you know again free running since its inception and you know kind of you know kind of someone who I guess visualizes a lot of things and actually puts things into practice how is it for you I guess when you first saw the film and you saw the finished product because uh, for a lot of artists when they perform or they do something that they're really passionate about that not many other people can do Sometimes when it's translated into television or onto film, it doesn't translate correctly, and sometimes a lot of it's a lot of stuff taken away. I don't know how you felt just about how the finished product. I mean, obviously, from what I can tell, it's a positive reaction. But I guess when you first saw it on the big screen, um, how was that? Uh, I knew already because uh, Alexander White showed me some uh, uh, footage of what they filmed uh, when, right where we were in in Bahamas. And straight away, I said, don't show me more because, uh, you know, artistically, you know, I, I look and say, okay, that's great. We're on, a, we're on the right page. And I think the other bit or so is uh, when we were in Leicester Square and uh, we did the, the, the premiere like, over there. And I see myself in a massive, like for the first time you see yourself in massive, it's like, it's not ego. It's just like something really weird. Like I was sitting like this and I just turned to look at people. You know, you know, like <laughs> you look at other people's reaction because it's like it's your piece of art. So you want to see how they react to, and you see them like the eyes like this. Oh, oh. And then for me, it's like yeah, it's a very 
fulfilling like like really good feeling like really really proud i was really really proud because you know, i i knew you know sometimes you can do something and you don't know if it was that good you know like uh maybe acting you know is my acting was good well my stuff i knew like you've never seen that you know like i know my i know my craft so i say you've mm. never seen that and i knew as i said to you all my legacy is there i love i love a uh, feeling you know a cat you know like a uh, Pan panther mm -hmm. all this stuff mm -hmm. and my legacy is that i want my expression my my character looks like a, a a panther or a tiger or something like that and and also because i'm really bruce lee uh, guy so for me i want everything portrayed like water smooth and like flu fluid like water and that was my legacy in one movie that's all i can do you know like i didn't say anything so if i can put a philosophy into my thing is this is it okay be water my friend and all this stuff that's what I tried to do in, in the movie. And I knew I did it. As soon as I saw it, I said, okay, even if people don't get it, I knew for me, it's right there. It's right there. Well, I'm aware of the time and I wanted to touch on some stuff like your appearance on Ninja Warrior. Mm -hmm. I'd urge people to go watch your Ninja Warrior uh, tapes on YouTube. Uh, I mean, I'm not, a, I used to work in fitness for a long time and the leisure industry. I've been around fit people for a very long time. You've exceeded them all in one video. Congratulations there. Like that, oh, that it, amazing, oh, so amazing stuff. Um, also, you. you know, you were on Dancing on Ice. That's uh, <laughs> quite an achievement <laughs> for anyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's my nature of uh, like to be challenged. Uh, I try stuff. I even cry in Dancing on Ice. Yeah. I don't know if you see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because, <laughs> because I did, um, uh, how do they call it? Uh, Method, uh, method acting, you know, like uh, <laughs> I tried to do, like you know, taxi driver when yeah. he went immerse himself into become. A, I did the same with ice skating. <laughs> I went with the the top skate, like the, the kid in UK was gonna be like they want to be a champion. So I spent time with them. And but what happened? I will I will try to do short. But basically, I create a, a persona of become a, a, a champion uh, skater. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> When I lose, when I lose, my my whole body react like if I lose the Olympic. That's what people say. Oh, what happened? Why oh. did you cry? I did. but it's a method acting. It's mm -hmm. because you become you become what you work on. So that's what that's the limit of it. <laughs> that's why I say, okay, I will never do that ever again. <laughs> but it was good because I train exactly like them. I become almost a skater. Mm -hmm. But there is a the other side of the coin, which I was like, oh. but anyhow, that's that's to, for the story of, of for people who want to know what happened. That, but that's why I like I like to do all this stuff. I like to challenge myself always. I wanted to, but I wanted to make time to talk about the Fruitcan Academy and the work you've been doing with yeah, kids. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I think that's important, um, and it's yeah. what I invest a lot of my time in in former careers. So I I uh, I. I I applaud you for working with children and trying to bring fitness to schools mm -hmm. and to kids because I think yeah. it's very important in your primary years. So just talk, if you could just tell us a little bit about what you've been doing and the work you're doing at the moment. Yeah, ultimately, uh, I always, you know, we'll try to find who, who you are and what you try to do. So for me, it's like, I know everything gravitates around playfulness and, and movement. Like that's how we connect all together. And I always say for me, activity is vitality. And that's why I try to transmit in my academy. It's not so much about parkour or learning or stuff like that. It's not so much about that. It's to make sure the children are allowed to play and to be active. And that's that's the most, especially after when we had the pandemic and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. It's like, we must move. We must move. It's so important. So in my academy, that's what we do. We, 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 uh, we teach children to be active and to believe in themselves. That's the most important because sometimes I say, they maybe not do parkour later on. But as an experience, it's like those who are introvert, we we make them a little bit more extrovert, and those who are extrovert, we make them a little bit introvert. So more modest, be careful. But that's all. All this teaching and there is kind of all this philosophy I want to transmit because of my background with the martial arts. For me, it's very important for the children to have like some grounding, you know, like strong roots mm -hmm. and good role model. So uh, uh, that's what is very important for me. That's my legacy, basically. It's like uh, for me, as I say, we play. This is this is my my thing. It's like, like make sure the children where they come in my place it's a safe place. That's so important. I keep saying that it's a safe place. No one's gonna judge you, and here you can express yourself, and we'll be here to to watch your back. So uh, that's it. This is it. Yeah, we've got three school. 
uh, when uh, um, uh, West London, mm -hmm. uh, West London Free School, uh, Addison School now near Hammersmith, and we uh, so South Kensington uh, Lycée Français, and we've got probably almost 300, 300 students now. Yeah, is West London Free School that's sort of North Alt way, isn't it? That that is that the one I'm thinking yeah, of? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, West London Free School, North Wales. <laughs> my map, where am I? I, I mean, I'm in West yeah, London myself, so I, I'm familiar with the yeah, territory. It's, it's near Amersmith Station. Yeah. Yeah, okay, absolutely. No, I mean, as I say, I, I want to take a moment just, just to point out the work you've been doing. It's very important to me Thank too. So much, and I'm going to put links in the show notes below for everyone who wants to look in more. If you have children, you, you know, schools you work with or anything like that, I'd recommend talking, just talk to Sebastian, see what he can do for you. But uh, yeah, just, just from me personally. Um, now, before we wrap up, I have a question I ask every single person who's been on this show from John Glenn through to now Sebastian Pucan. The question for you, sir, what is your favorite spy movie of all time? My favorite spy movie of all time. I tried to think. Did I forget any spy movie? It can be a James Bond if you want. That that all counts. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, any, anything that's personal for you. I know. I try to not be biased. So I try to really think because obviously the first one I would say is James Bond. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's tough. I have to say only one. Mm -hmm. If you have a couple, by all means, you know, we, we've probably seen them all at this point. Yeah, I, I would say that there is a, definitely a chance bone mm -hmm. for me. So like, uh, the, especially with Daniel, Daniel, for me, it's like, uh, I watch them. You know, sometimes you can do work and then you like it, man, but you don't really watch. Yeah. I've got, I've got all the video. I've got them. It's really okay. I've got them. You see, I don't have Sean Connery. I don't have uh, Pierce Brosnan. I don't have any of them. I watch them, I like them, but the only one I got is from Casino Royale, and not just because of uh, and uh, all the series, all the all the with Daniel Craig. The the other thing is the uh, Jason Bourne. Mm -hmm. I like the Jason Bourne uh, uh, thing. Not all of them. I think the the first and the two, the one, the first one and the second one. They're my favorites. See now, see, I go too far now. Uh, <laughs> maybe a kind of like there is something I like with the Mission Impossible. Mm -hmm. The terrific films, yeah. You see, there's some of them I I, I like. Uh, is it? Give me another spy movie. Do, do you know another one? Uh, well, it 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 goes all over the room. You can do do Hitchcock films back to like the Thirty Nine Steps and North by Northwest. If you want to go back to the thirties and the fifties, sixties, you've got all things like uh, or, or you can do like Austin Powers. And you can do funny ones if you want. Oh yeah, you see. Oh uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, of course. Yes, I like, you see, you see, because like, my head just I don't click because we've been talking about Casino Royale, but yeah, Austin mm. Power is good. It's funny. Not only the serious one, I say Austin Power. Yes. Oh my god. There is so many, so many uh, movie. Uh, There's some really good French ones too. The uh, the OSS one one seven films. They're all French language oh, yes, films. Yes, yes, yes. Jean du Jardin. Yep. Oh, Hilarious yeah, films. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the original ones yeah. and the Jean du Jardin ones are very good. I always recommend them to people. Yeah, you see, you see the, your question is tough because ah. <laughs> yeah, I like spy movie. Uh, I I don't like everything in in the particular movie, but there is a lot of stuff I I kind of like, but. Uh, do you, would you say it's uh, with uh, Harrison Ford is spy movie also? You know, there is some movie where he did. Uh, where it's got like political. Harrison movie. Ford. Do you mean um, the Clear and Present Danger and oh, it's it's the Jack Ryan films you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other yeah, ones escaping me. Uh, it's not Air Force One. It's something else. But yeah, I they they, yeah, they do count. You see what I mean? They do count. Yeah. Yes. Mm. So it's kind of it's that's kind of my my movie. So I like to watch it. It's just like you need to say who did what. Who's responsible for what? You know, kind of stuff. Uh, but yeah, but to answer, I would definitely go for for James Bond. James Bond is the number one. Perfect. That's why that's we work for that is the number one. Now, uh, what they're gonna do for the future? Because I won't spoil for everyone who hasn't seen the last one. But uh, but yeah, now my I'm very curious about the next uh, about the what's gonna be. I think uh, we all are at this point. Where does it go? What would, I, I'll ask you the question as we've got a couple of seconds. Where would you like to see it go now? Do you want it to go more I real or do you prefer more of the fun? To be honest, I accept what they did at the end. Mm -hmm. No spoilers, mm -hmm. but yes. I have to accept because this is an artistic choice. Sure. But that's not what I would have done. It's, it's not my choice. But for me, it's like, no, come on. You know, that's that's me. 
it, to be honest, it's like, no, 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 don't, no, no. Nah. I mean, the, the good news is that James Bond will return as, as always. So it will, it will come back in some shape or form and hopefully we'll all enjoy it. What um, do you mean? Do you mean, why, why is he returned? Because he left? What's going on? Well, no, well, just because, I mean, it's always the same. No, they're just, they're just, they're just a new actor. It doesn't matter how the previous one left. He's got you. Know? you. Sebastian's got you <laughs> no. now. Yeah, yeah, it will return. Yeah, yeah, it's true. It will return. But for me, it's like, uh, yeah, how? What? It's curiosity. What are they going to do? I, I like Tying it back to what we were talking about before, I will recommend people watch the Jean de Jardin OSS 117 films for an idea of how you could do Bond again now in the 60s. Because they're funny and they work. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Mm. Yeah, the sky is the limit. Quite right. And the perfect way to wrap us up. Sebastian, I want to thank you for taking the time today. Um, I will leave links below to the Frucan Academy. I recommend you all take a look at that. And yeah, just what a lovely chat it was. And thank you. My pleasure. And there you are, folks. That was our chat with Mr. Sebastian Frucan. Again, I want to thank Sebastian for joining us. Um, there are links to all the things we discussed in the show notes below. Uh, but before we let everyone go, I think let's just chat about the interview a little bit. Mm. Learned a lot about Sebastian, uh, about his backstory, about free running, about parkour. But we're here to talk about Casino Royale. And uh, I think the first thing that really jumped out to me was the fact that he had no training in acting or anything like that. And just what a fantastic job he does in the film. Yeah, I, th- I think it's one of those things where, you know, Someone who whose specialty is in one thing may not necessarily be able to, you know, transfer skills into other areas. But in this case, it really works. And I think part of that is due to his ability to kind of be really open minded. I think some people would think I'm here just for one particular reason. But he looked at this as a challenge and said, I'm going to put my all into it. And as we can tell and as we spoke about, we see on screen that that came together to make one of the most recognizable and iconic sequences in Bond and probably one of the highlights of stunts in Naughty's film, I guess. Naughty's films. Naughty's I love films. I love Naughty's. Um no, I completely agree. And you know, one thing he said in the interview was just how how open he was to the process and how collaborative everyone was from you know, from Martin Campbell, Daniel Craig, the stunts team, Gary Powell. They all work together to create this sequence. And you can imagine someone coming in, you know, with the credentials that he had in free running, having invented the sport with perhaps a chip on his shoulder. But uh, no, he threw himself into the work and, and, and learned from it and has gone on to do more movie projects. So, yeah, fair play to him. But Sam, is there something that you want to chat about from the uh, interview? Yeah, I guess I, the main thing that I took away, which I, which I think, you know, really brought a smile to my face was just his whole positive attitude about the whole thing. I mean, many, many people will take jobs like these and just see them, right, they're just, it's just one thing, I'm doing this and that's it and move on. He talks about this as being such like a, a wonderful moment and a great learning experience for him. And, you know, we've, we've mentioned the acting side, but it's, it's so many, you know, facets of filmmaking and what goes into that. And I really feel that he's taken all of that on board and used that in the other projects that he's done since. And yeah, just the fact that he speaks so fondly about it. I mean, a lot of people would say, oh yeah, it's a film that I did 16 years ago, filmed 15, uh, 17 years ago, that's it. But, you know, he was really able to kind of share some things that a lot of people may not have remembered, but because this was such an important moment, um, he really took a lot out of it. And for me, that makes me very happy to hear because you, what we want to imagine that every person who works on a film or anything can take so many positive experiences away. And unfortunately, that's not always the case. The fact that he was so open about it and had so much to say was just really wonderful. Yeah, I mean, we've had quite a few interviews at this point on the show, and there's been a varying grab bag of interest and passion for it for some people, and and fair play to them. I mean, for me personally, work is work, and that's how it is. It pays the bills. And, and this is a passion for me. Uh, you know, for some actors, this is that's just a job they do, and then they go home and do the things they're interested in. Fair play to them. But you can tell Sebastian was so passionate about what he did with this film and why he's still happy to talk about it X amount of years later. And I hope you heard it through the interview. We, me and Sam had a great time talking to him, but you know, a lot of that energy came from him. He brought that to the discussion, and I think that is deeply rooted in his love of not only what he does with free running and parkour, but also with 
the film. And he had a love of the Bond franchise before we did this, and that's continued afterwards. We spoke at the end of the discussion about his, Daniel Craig's work going forward with the rest of his films as well, and, and Sebastian's kept up with all that. And that, again, just shows his love for this film and this franchise, and, and that's why we're here celebrating 60 years. And I wanted to mention, you know, I spoke to uh, Joseph Milson last week, uh, Carter, from the same sequence as well. It's actually rare to have two actors in the same sequence as two interviews. So that was quite nice to do. Um, shame we couldn't get them together in the same chat. That would have been really, would have been fun. really fun. It would really great. Um, taking things from the set. Now, uh, Joseph took a pair of trousers that, that lasted about 10 years because he wore them to death. And if you haven't heard that interview with Joseph, I urge you to go back and listen to that. It's uh, some fantastic insights into what, uh, what could have been with uh, Carter and uh, if he really ever got his finger out of his ear you can find more about that in that interview but um, Sebastian on the other hand kept a few mementos from the set and we got to see them and hopefully I'll put some clips of the video online this week or next so you can see what he brought back but you know you heard the chat he saved the bullet that was meant to kill him and his shoes that he's running in throughout the sequence that's a memento right there yeah, I mean, I think that you you hear stories so many times of people wanting to take things and they aren't able to and then other times where people do. So, I mean, it's always funny to hear what people do get because sometimes they can be the smallest thing. Sometimes they're just, it's like, how did you get them off the sets? They're so massive. But, you know, the most important things that I think for, for him were what I would think would be the most important, which are the shoes, which, of course, you know, it's a free running sequence that, of course, is such an important element of that. And, of course, the bullet that was technically used to, to kill you with in the vet it's it's kind of like oh right okay so um absolutely him bringing those out and being so happy to to show them off um did make me a bit jealous too um but no it's just so lovely to see that he managed to keep a couple of things and i love you know as you know we're a spy movie podcast i love spy work and uh, it was great to see him have to say that he like had to grab the bullet as it was discharged from the chamber just so he can keep it when the scene was over because otherwise they would just you know, sweep it away as the people would tidy up for the next shot uh, i like that he had the wherewithal to sort of say no i i should hold on to this because it's not i don't think i'm gonna be back because my character dies so uh, i'm never gonna do a bomb film again let's grab something and keep it as a memento and, he, and he's kept these in a box in his house they looked after They've not got holes in them like Joseph's trousers did after 10 years of wear. So, um, yeah, I mean, credit to Sebastian. I want to thank him again for joining us. Now, um, yeah, that was the second part of our Spy Master interviews. I hope you've enjoyed them. The special treat on Friday this week is me and Cam are going back to 1950s to review the Climax TV special of Casino Royale, starring uh, you know, Spy Hard's favourite Peter Lorre as Le Chiffre. Um So that should be fun. But before we wrap up, I want to just thank you, Sam. Oh, that's, yeah. that's lovely. No, thank you for having me again. It's, it's, it's lovely. It's been lovely to be a part of this wonderful interview. I mean, I'm not just saying that. It was such a pleasure. We could have actually you know, gone on speaking with Sebastian, um, had time not been an issue there. Um, but no, it was wonderful. No, and you know we'll we'll get you back on the show somewhere down the line to to review a, a movie with us. Something uh, something Austin Powers. I feel like is right up your alley. I mean, I love a good spy who shagged me. Uh, so I'm happy to <laughs> maybe be part of that one <laughs> or anything else. So um, yeah, no, whatever, whenever I'm needed or so called for, I will. I will move some things around for sure. No, well, you're, you've joined a rare breed of people who have co-hosted with us. Now, there's a, a small handful of people and you're in that team. So welcome, welcome. I, I guess that makes you our fourth agent, with Shayla Miller being the third. Well, I was going to say, no one can beat Shayla, so I'm absolutely happy to be under Shayla uh, next in line. Um, so, yeah, I'm happy to be part of this exclusive club. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, your tuxedo uh, is in the post. Oh, I'm 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 checking my I'm checking uh, UPS already. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, if people want to hear more from you, Sam, uh, where can they hear from you online? Um, online. So the main place where I talk spiel is my Twitter, which is at Sam R underscore nineteen ninety five. Um, I also am on Instagram, although that's a lot of other stuff that's not technically related to anything Bond. Bondy or anything like that, but that is Sam underscore J underscore Rogers. Um, and I also do some writing for License to Queer. Um, so that's www.licensequeer.com. And yeah, and sometimes about on other channels. So you may see you may see my name about if you follow Spy Heart, you may see my name in a couple of other things as well. Uh, but generally just out and about, mostly focusing on Bond, but doing other things as well. So yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, at time of recording, Sam and I are, are enjoying the 60th James Bond uh, celebrations around the BFI and at the Royal Abbot Hall for the upcoming music celebration. So, uh, yes, it's, it's a great time to be a Bond fan right now, I would say. Oh, yeah, everything. I mean, it's it's good and bad because everything's happening all at once. And you see all these people, which is great. But because everything's happening all at once... Um, it's a lot of money <laughs> being spent as well, alongside train strikes and other other major things. It's been a bit of a weird, hectic time, however, to see all these people, to take part in some re- really fantastic events um, has been fantastic, and it's going to culminate in this uh, concert tomorrow at the Royal Albert Hall that we're going to be going to, and where we're all going to be getting smart uh, suits and tuxes and all of that, so I'm sure uh, anyone listening will see pictures by this point of things that took place. I may, may have even watched the highlights uh, video that's going to be on Amazon Prime of it. So uh, absolutely check that out as well. well. Speak for yourself, Sam. I'm sat here in a, in a tuxedo uh, and sipping a martini. So uh, I have a bottle of Diet Coke. It's not as glamorous. Well, well quite. But um, speaking of not as glamorous, coming up later this week, of course, we have 1954's Climax Adaptation of Casino Royale. So look out for that. It'll be a shorter episode. It won't be a complete deep dive like normal, just be me and Cam hanging out talking about a TV show because we don't put TV shows on the knock list. But So I guess your mission, should you choose to accept it, is two things. Firstly, enjoy the celebrations. James Bond only turns 60 once. Get out there, watch some films, and overall, be positive about it because you only get one shot at this place and let's bring some joy to the world, eh? And that other mission is to join us later this week as we review Casino Royale from 1954, the Climax TV special, the first time James Bond ever appears on the screen. If you liked what you heard on this interview, please consider leaving us a five-star review wherever you get your podcasts and do not forget to follow us discreetly on social media at SpyHards, that's S-P-Y-H-A-R-D-S on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. But until next week, listeners, go and stick your head in the sand somewhere and think about your future, because these bastards want your head, and I'm seriously considering feeding you to them.